All right, so we're going to open up uh, VirtualBox. And this is a VirtualBox manager. So uh, if you have successfully installed Hortonworks Sandbox, then you're going to see this button over here. So uh, by double clicking this, we're uh, literally, we're, we're effectively uh, pushing the power button of the virtual computer where we have the, the Hortonworks Sandbox installation of Hadoop is. So as you can see, uh, here's a screen of that virtual computer. Uh, you will notice that there's a there's a blink of the cursor. So it's it's like the exactly like the screen that you will see when you uh, push the power button of a computer. Uh, now the computer is loading up, and after a while, uh, you're gonna see a screen like this. So in the middle, it says for virtual box. The welcome screen is HTTP local host uh, colon 1080. So that's the that's the URL and the port number. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a, a web browser. In my case, I'm using Google Chrome, um, and then I'm gonna type the address local host 1080. And this is going to be the first screen that you'll see. Um, what you're going to do is to click this button in case you have a, a pop-up blocker or ad block installed in your web browser, then uh, it's going to cause some error. So what I recommend is to uh, go to the menu uh, and then uh, go to the app settings and then uh, yeah, disable uh, pop-up blocker. Uh, at least for this uh, this particular URL, so you can launch you can launch the uh, the the dashboard, and then uh, it's gonna pop up two windows. Uh, the first one over here is simply just a tutorial. So uh, of course, for beginners, it's always good to have this tutorial open, and then it's quite handy. You can just um, uh, search keywords in the tutorial. And then it'll show, uh, it'll list all the tutorials that's available. Uh, they're quite nicely organized, so it's it, it can be quite useful. But in this demo, I'm going to just close this tutorial window. Uh, now, the other window over here, it says Ambari. So in the previous class, we talked about uh, what Ambari is, right? So uh, Ambari, uh, just to remind you, is a high-level interface uh, where you can overlook the entire Hadoop cluster. So uh, we're going to sign in, and then the default uh, admin a username and a password is Maria underscore dev. Okay, uh, same uh, password. So Maria underscore dev. So that's the default uh, admin password that's, uh, that comes with the Hortonworks sandbox. Obviously, in the real-world scenario, uh, you know each different administrators have you know different username and password. But since this is a uh, this is kind of an emulator that runs on your computer on your local machine, uh, Maria Dev Maria Dev is the username and the password. So click sign in, and after a while, it's going to load up a screen. We have a progress bar running. And then there you go. So this is the Embarry window. Now it takes time to load up. Obviously, uh, my computer is not that powerful, so you can see that uh, it's taking a while. Uh, and then immediately after opening up uh, Embarry, uh, here I'm seeing 27 alerts. So that sounds scary, but uh, don't worry. The reason is because uh, it takes a while to. Uh, load up uh, HDFS, Yarn, and you know all, all the services here. And the uh, 27 alerts are simply because you know not all the modules are turned on. And as you can see, there's a one operation going. So if you click this, then what you'll see is uh, you know uh, we have this operation called start all services, and then that's uh, taking a while. So in my experience on my computer, which is again not so powerful, it takes about uh, it takes anywhere between thirty minutes to an hour. 
So uh, it's a little bit painful to wait for uh, you know all the services to to load up. But in this video recording, we're gonna just do the magic of video editing. All right, a little bit fast forward to the future. So now we have all the services started. So uh, this is uh, back in the screen of Embari. Uh, now you can see that the, all the alerts are going away. Um, and then uh, we have those green check boxes that says uh, everything is just running fine. So uh, here's a dashboard. Um, I, I show you this screen already uh, a couple lectures ago. Uh, back then, you probably had no idea what uh, what is going on here. But now that we know what HDFS is, what Yarn is, what MapReduce is, what Hive is, and so on and so forth, now a lot of things st will start to make sense, right? So uh, this is kind of a dashboard that shows all the uh, uh, the overall status of uh, the Hadoop cluster. Uh, you can see that the, the, the HDFS disk usage is displayed over here. Uh, we have some uh, shortcuts to... Uh, check the status of the name node and secondary name node. Uh, we have currently only one data node alive because, uh, again, we're, we're emulating Hadoop cluster in a local machine. So in the actual Hadoop cluster, you're going to see uh, way more than just one data node. But in this case, uh, in, in, in our situation, uh, we have only one data node. Oh, and by the way, the name node, secondary name node, and you know the data node, they all sit in a same local machine because this is, again, a rep emulator. But obviously, in the actual implementation of the Hadoop cluster, they're all uh, different computers. So uh, just out of curiosity, let's just click this uh, name node thing over here. Uh, this will then lead you to uh, an overview, uh, the admin screen, showing the uh, status of the name node. Uh, as you can see, a lot of things going on. Uh, at this point, we don't need to know what uh, uh, what what those things are line by line, but you can get a gist of what Embarry can do and you know uh, what it displays and you know things like that. So I'm going to go back to the dashboard screen. Um, you can also uh, see the heat map display of uh, the status of the Hadoop cluster. Now you can see that uh, there's only one uh, default rack over here. But again, uh, in case of so it's it's kind of boring, uh, you know, at this moment. But in the real Hadoop environment, you're going to see a lot more, uh, you know, bars blocks like this uh, because usually there are you know more than just one rack. Uh, and then this is basically to show uh, the the disk space. Uh, and then their usage, okay? Um, I'm not going to spend too much of time explaining the dashboard because um, the, the focus of, you know, this course is to, you know, to, to present you the necessary skills as a data scientist, not necessarily, uh, you know, database engineer or uh, technician. So, uh, we're not so much interested in this course, you know, what, you know, these boxes are exactly and, you know, how to manage the Hadoop cluster and, you know, things like that. That's not um, our intent over here. Though, uh, one thing I want to mention is uh, if you go to this uh, square boxes over here, uh, if you put your cursor over that uh, icon, you can see that uh, a pop-up uh, menu uh, shows up. So we have files view. Let me click that. So if I go to the file view, I can see this uh, view, which lists all the files in the Hadoop cluster. So uh, although uh, HDFS is going to do all this, uh, you know, uh, heavy lifting of uh, distributing the files and you know things like that what you're seeing in the Embari screen is more or less like just a you know a, 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 a plain folder view of what's in the drive and you know so on and so forth uh, so nothing really special here and that's really the power of Hadoop because 
uh, from the user's perspective, there's nothing much different from ordinary file system. So this is uh, Maria Dev. Uh, that's the um, that's the account that we are log we're we're logged in. Uh, in in my case, I have this high folder. You probably have no folder like this. Uh, I, I you're you're probably gonna have an empty folder, uh, but I have uh, this high folder. This is where uh, Hive stores uh, the log files uh, from my previous uh, previous job. So as I go in there, you can see that there's a jobs folder, and then you have a bunch of uh, Hive jobs. Those are kind of logs. Um, from my previous execution of uh, Hive commands, uh, but we, we we don't have to worry about uh, anything over here. Now, uh, in the user folder, uh, you can upload a file, obviously. So this is, um, you know, think of like uh, as a cloud storage. So you can uh, click upload, and here is my uh, sample data set. So people.csv. So this is, by the way, a uh, baseball data set I've downloaded from uh, the place called Chadwick uh, Baseball Bureau. Um, so these are the files that I downloaded from that. Uh, it contains the uh, uh, information of all the uh, players uh, who ever played in the Major League Baseball. Uh, we have the pitching record of the baseball players there. So just uh, just for the sake of demonstrating what uh, uh, Embari can do, let me just click uh, pitching.csv, the picture record, and then click open. And then you can see now I have that pitching.csv file uploaded to my user folder. Okay, you can of course create a new folder. So you can pretty much manage this uh, as if you're just using a cloud uh, you know, data storage. So this is this is quite convenient interface. Um, I want to also show you the Hive view. So uh, previously we talked about the, uh, the the Hadoop ecosystem, and then we saw that Hive was basically a SQL interface uh, to interact with Hadoop and MapReduce. So as I go into the Hive view. We have the query editor. Um, this is where you uh, type in uh, SQL commands. Uh, there's already some default databases. So uh, again, in my case, uh, I have already, uh, in my previous run, I have already loaded the uh, people.csv file and the pitching.csv file. So that's why I have something under default database, um, uh, uh, under default database. Um, and then there's a food mark database, which is uh, kind of an example database that uh, comes with uh, Hortonworks Sandbox. Um, in case you have your own data set, uh, what you can do is actually to go to upload table. And then uh, you can choose file. Uh, you can select from your local hard drive and then click uh, people.csv for example and then after a while it's going to show you an overview of the data uh, file so you can see that the csv file has been loaded up and then you can see kind of a preview of the contents of the data so we have about uh, two four six eight nine um, you know rows displayed over here actually ten rows including the header so we have uh, we have ten rows displayed over here, as you can see, uh, but the da the actual data file contains way much more than that because it's uh, it's a collection of the players uh, who ever played in the in the Major League Baseball history. So there's got to be a lot of uh, thousands of uh, people who played in uh, MLB. So uh, we have thousands of rows, but uh, in this preview we have only ten rows over here. Now, uh, you may have noticed that uh, the first row is a header row, and then um, for some reason, uh, Hive has recognized, has not recognized uh, the first row as the header. The reason is because uh, of the settings. So if you click this uh, little gear over here, uh, it pops up a menu, and then uh, at, the at the bottom, 
it says uh, is first row header and then you can see that the checkbox is empty so what you're gonna do is to click checkbox and then close now you see that the first row is recognized as a header and then the, the column names are uh, automatically updated accordingly so this is quite convenient uh, we also have the data types right now uh, it's recognizing everything as string which is the safest assumption obviously so uh, that's basically uh, what it looks like uh, in Hive you have to uh, kind of manually select the data type uh, to make sure that uh, everything works in a way that you expect um, for now we're not going to bother to uh, change everything to the correct data type uh, but here I'm gonna just show you uh, you have an ability you have a you know uh, you can actually uh, change the data type of each of the column manually like this and then after uh, all the configuration is done you can just click upload table then uh, it's gonna pop up a screen that shows the progress of uploading the table it may take some while because what's happening you know behind the scene is uh, it actually parses all the CSV file and then uh, creates um, there there's lots of going on under the hood uh, it'll create a, 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 a structure uh, that can be stored in Hadoop uh, in, in Hadoop uh, HDFS and then it's gonna distribute the file uh, if necessary um, into multiple, uh, you know, storage devices. Uh, even if there's, you know, um, in case your CSV file is large, then it's obviously going to break it down to smaller blocks. We, we talk about that, uh, in our previous lecture, um, Hadoop basically, uh, Hadoop basically breaks down a large file into smaller blocks. Uh, but even if uh, you have only one block because the file size is small, uh, what really happens is it, it's going to create replicated copies across uh, distributed file storage so that uh, it becomes fault tolerant. Uh, another way that I want to mention uh, in terms of how to upload table is uh, we already uh, uploaded a CSV file from the files view. So you can actually upload a file from uh, HDFS directly in that case. Um, and you can type the full HDFS path over here. So the path is actually user um, forward slash Maria dev uh, forward slash uh, pitching dot CSV. So if you click preview, then you're gonna see uh, more or less the same interface uh, like this where you can select the columns uh, the data types uh, you can do the same thing to change the first row into the header so just click the checkbox so it's it's pretty much the same so you can either go to the files view and then upload a file um, you know before to um, you, you can you can either go to the files view and then upload a uh, upload a data file directly to uh, you, your user folder and then upload from HDFS or you can just upload everything from local directly from this upload table menu so uh, either way uh, it works just fine uh, so once you load it up your data set so again um, you know I have already uploaded people and peaching databases over here so then uh, what you can do is simply, um, you know, just execute uh, a SQL command. So uh, in my case, I'm going to just uh, demonstrate a simplest um, uh, command. So this is basically uh, a command of uh, for selecting the entire data uh, from this people database. So uh, after typing the SQL query, I'm going to just click uh, execute button. So now uh, what's happening over here uh, is, um, oh, sorry, I forgot the semicolon and then uh, obviously Hive auto completes that. Um, what happens here is uh, as I click the execute button, it's gonna send the command to the, to the Hadoop server. Of course, again, uh, this is an emulator, so everything runs on your local machine, so we're not actually sending the command over the internet or anything. But 
uh, in case uh, you have an actual Hadoop cluster, then what happens is uh, you're, you're going to connect a uh, Mbari uh, screen from your local machine, right? And then your local machine is going to send the query to the Hadoop cluster. And then the Hadoop cluster will execute the command. And in fact, uh, what Hive does is to convert a SQL query uh, to an optimized code uh, that is suitable for, uh, for the Hadoop data distributed file system. Uh, remember, uh, last time we talked about the difference between the Hadoop, uh, you know, Hadoop uh, distributed file system versus uh, SQL databases, right? So uh, Hadoop is not exactly SQL. So uh, by default, I mean, there's no like trivial way of uh, running Hadoop using SQL command because those are two different things. But what Hive does is to give you a SQL-like interface so that you don't really have to worry about what's really happening uh, in the Hadoop cluster. So all the heavy lifting is going to be uh, taken care of by, uh, by Hive and you know, all their other you know, underlying uh, nuts and bolts uh, under the hood. Uh, and from the data scientist perspective, only thing you need to do is to just, you know, run a run the usual SQL query, uh, like as if you know what you would do uh, with those ordinary SQL databases. So this is actually quite convenient, especially if you already know uh, what SQL is. So while I was talking, uh, the result, the the Hadoop cluster, the virtual cluster. Uh, has spit it out uh, the result of running that command. So obviously uh, here the result contains all the um, data files, right? Uh, I mean the, all the entries in the data uh, in the database because we basically just selected the entire uh, database from this uh, this people database. Of course, you can, uh, sp you know, give more specific queries. So instead of just selecting everything, you can select, for example, the birth year of the person and, uh, I don't know, maybe birth country, birth state, you know, uh, just a few columns that you're interested in. And then you can also specify a condition uh, such as, oh, I want the players who was born after 1980, you know, those kind of things. Um, but I'm not going to demonstrate all the, the SQL uh, command because this course is not about uh, how to do SQL. Instead, let me direct your attention to this, uh, this little pop-up window uh, on the right. So uh, right now we're in our SQL, okay? So SQL is selected and highlighted in blue. Uh, you can actually click this uh, graph button over here. Uh, this is the visualization tool that comes with uh, with uh, with Hive, and as I click this button, uh, it's going to show up a window, uh, a different window that says a visualization. It takes a little while uh, for this guy to load up all the uh, information because we just selected a massive uh, data set of baseball players. So. Uh, what's happening right now is uh, Hive is processing all the information to prepare this visualization tool. So this is pretty neat uh, visualization tool, which uh, you can explore data set using a graphical user interface. So you don't have to type uh, any code or anything. So even if you don't know how to uh, program using Python or Java or Scala, um, you know, you can simply just drag and drop uh, some of the information. So, for example, uh, I don't know if that makes any sense or not, but I'm just going to, you know, just to demonstrate uh, what's happening over here, I'm just going to drag birth year uh, to the X slot over here, and then I'm going to plot uh, birth day to the to to y uh, slot over here so what i just what i've just done is to create a graph showing the relationship between the birth year and the birthday obviously there's no uh explainable correlation between the two right but uh just to demonstrate uh what it can do um you know 
here. So this is a this is a graph showing uh, the relationship between the birth year and uh, birthday. And it seems like we have uh, somebody who was born uh, with Jesus. So uh, this is obviously an outlier. Uh, perhaps this is because uh, the birth information of a particular player is missing. So I think uh, everything is set to zero, zero, zero. So this is obviously an outlier, especially if you're concerned uh, with a problem that you know involves the uh, the age of the player or uh, birthday uh, of the player. So this is going to be then. Uh, obviously an outlier so this is a nice uh, graphical interface uh, which shows you know kind of an, a, a broad overview of the data set okay and 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 from there uh, you can also select uh, sorry you can also discover some outliers uh, you can have a you know better sense of what's going on in your data set um, so that is uh, the data visualization tool. So uh, what we've seen today in this video was that uh, uh, kind of an overview of uh, uh, Apache Ambari. Ambari is um, a, a, a graphical user interface to uh, kind of overlook the entire Hadoop uh, cluster. So we, we saw the dashboard and we saw that there's a lot of things going on. Uh, we don't necessarily need to understand all, uh, you know, every single thing. Um, instead, um, I'll be happy already if you guys can recognize uh, uh, what HDFS is, what Yarn is, and, you know, at least, you know, you have some idea what those things are so that later on when necessary, you know what, uh, what to search from Google, right? Uh, and where to ask for help and you know things like that so uh, it should be sufficient if you know at least um, kind of a broad meaning of what those things are uh, even if you don't know how exactly those things work and what exactly those things mean and uh, how exactly you can um, you know modify the settings and you know things like that you're, you're not going to worry about it okay and then we also saw this uh, files view and the high view where uh, we could pretty much uh, easily interact with the Hadoop cluster. We saw that even without knowing how to program, uh, you could actually analyze your data set. You can visualize the data set. So this is actually quite a convenient tool. Okay. So um, in today's video, we kind of uh, overview the, the Hadoop um, you know, data cluster. So uh, although, you know, we, we talk about a lot of technical stuff in the previous lecture, uh, the, you know, the distributed file system and how the uh, files are split into blocks, the, the fault tolerance, all those theoretical stuff. But in, in the actual practice, you know, my, the, the, the point of this video is that in the actual practice, you don't really have to worry about all this, you know, crazy things because, you know, those are the things that uh, works under the hood. And, you know, from a data science perspective, uh, all you need to know is like in the files view, all, all you need to know is, well, you know, you, you, you just need to understand, you know, how broadly, um, I mean, in, at the abstract level, how Hadoop cluster works. And, you know, once you have that basic understanding, the actual usage is pretty much the same as uh, those ordinary, um, you know, uh, online storage services, like, for example, Dropbox, right? So the interface is pretty much the same uh, as those. And uh, you could even, you know, use Hive uh, Pig or Taz. Those are the same thing as well. Uh, you could pretty much use Hive Pig or Taz to do some sort of a graphical, um, you know, analysis. So without having to do the programming, without having to understand all the nuts and bolts uh, of the Hadoop cluster. So this is this is pretty convenient. Uh, for advanced users, uh, although this is uh, beyond the scope of this course, uh, there's of course is a way to you know interact with this uh, Hadoop cluster. Uh, you know, in a command line interface. So that's more professional use. So for example, 
you know, uh, Hadoop is basically a, a Linux-based uh, system. So uh, you can um, basically open up a terminal and then you can type the command and then you can, you know, for example, list the contents of the folder. You can upload things. You can configure Hadoop cluster using command line. Um, you, you can configure uh, Hadoop cluster using command line. But those are kind of beyond the, the scope of this class. Um, from the next lecture, uh, we're going to do actually something in between. So uh, the, the graphical user interface is pretty easy. So um, um, if you just play around for, uh, I don't know, a couple hours, you will already kind of, you know, uh, have a pretty good idea of how to use this uh, graphical user interface. But uh, for more advanced data ana uh, analytics, for example, if you want to machine uh, apply machine learning algorithm to your data set and then you know find the correlation and you know yada yada yada, for those kind of operations, uh, you probably need something more than just a graphical user interface. So uh, in the next lecture, what we're gonna do is to use this thing called Apache Spark. Uh, Apache Spark is a uh, like we saw in the last uh, lecture. Apache Spark is uh, something equivalent to uh, Hadoop MapReduce, uh, but there's you know uh, way more than just uh, the MapReduce. So we're going to talk about uh, Apache Spark. Uh, Spark comes with uh, three different uh, programming languages. Uh, it comes with uh, Java, Scala, and uh, Python. And then uh, we're going to use this Python version of Apache Spark. So uh, all of the things that we saw today uh, through the graphical user interface uh, can also be done by using Apache Spark, using Python language, and then there's actually way much more than just, you know, viewing the files and, you know, uh, drawing a plot and, you know, querying some uh, data entries uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, Spark actually comes with a machine learning library, which can be quite powerful uh, in analyzing um, you know, in applying machine learning algorithm to a big data, uh, you know, services. So, so that's it for today. Um, thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next lecture.